Well, good morning, everybody. It's the 29th of, of January, and our New Testament reading today is in Matthew 20. Okay. Um, Old Testament is, is Exodus 20, 20, uh, 20, 21, 22, or 19, 20, 21. Well, Ten Commandments and stuff, but we're, that's good preacher too, but this is on the New Testament. Then were there brought on, oh, read the wrong verse. Chapter 20, Matthew. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder. Uh, anybody know who's speaking here? God. It is God, but it, his name is Jesus Christ, second person of the Trinity. It is God. Uh, Householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. God's looking for a people for his own. He's looking for a people that he had created in his image. Did you know? Well, glory. Did you know that I'm going to look like Jesus? Now, I can't figure this out. And if you can, tell me about it after after I get done preaching after a while when we eat. But um, it says all saved people are going to look like Jesus. Now, how's a woman going to look like Jesus? Because he's a man. I don't know. Anybody think you know? I, I, if you say you know, I say you're full of mashed potatoes. You, you, you ain't got no idea. Uh, that's beyond our thinking. No, but it ain't going to be a spirit because he ate, he ate fish, Donnie. He ate fish and honey. Spirits don't eat fish and honey. Yeah, you're going to eat too. Mary's Supper of the Lamb. I don't know about it because you know what? I'm just a little dummy. God's he know everything. And he went out early in the morning to hire laborers. I like early people. Donnie gets up early. I like him. I'm trying to think anybody else in here gets up early. Anybody else get up early? Okay, I like you too. I can't stand people sleep in till noon. Early in the morning, to high laborers into his vineyard. Donnie's a good worker. Jake's a good worker. Joey's a good worker. A couple of these are pretty good workers, too. There's good workers. Not just because you're a good worker, you can have a lot of other deficiencies, but a work is something that's the important thing. But a lot of people, especially younger people today, they're too heavy for light work and too light for heavy work. They don't want to work. Yeah. But Donnie's a good worker. Jake's a good worker. Joey's a good worker. Debbie's a good worker. And they always have an excuse. Kelvin's a good worker. Oh, yeah. Now, all those people I, I noticed, you want me to tell you all their deficiencies also or just that they're a good worker? They Each of you say, no, just tell them about how I'm a good worker. Don't tell them about none of the other stuff. <laughs> And when he had agreed with them laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into the vineyard. Verse 3. And it went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard. Whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. And again, he went out about the sixth hour, ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand ye here all day idle? Now, first of all, let me just tell you this. According to what this is saying, what would you surmise that the Bible is teaching here uh, in regard to how long a work day is? How, how many hours do you think a... A normal work day is for a person. Eight hours. Huh? Eight hours. What does it say here? It's saying all 24. No. It doesn't say 24. Read it. We just read it. 12 hours. 12th hour. Okay? So a normal work day, 
it would be usually like from uh, sunrise to sunset, 12 hours. So a normal work day would be about 12 hours. That's the way uh, a farmer's actually, any, we got any farmers in here, got any hay seeds in here, any farmers in here? Okay, got one hay seed. Uh, but the hay seeds, uh, uh, they get up, uh, some of the hay seeds, they get up when it's dark out and they go do some work before they even eat breakfast and they come back and eat breakfast. Is that, is that true? I don't know I've done that. But, uh, so, um, but work is good. They get up about usually about four or five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And that's usually before it's at sunset. And, 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 and they'll work. Sometimes, sometimes during harvest time, they'll work after the sun gone down. And sometimes, according to the circumstances of weather or whatever, whatever it is, uh, uh, sometimes uh, they'll work all night to get harvest in. You know, you, the farmers are good people, working people. I like farmers, and I like, I like the farm lifestyle. They supply our food. Of course we got to like them. They supply what we eat. They supply us. And, you know, like Doris was real poor. Doris going to watch this, but Doris is real poor. But they lived on a farm, and they were self-sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. They had their own eggs, they ate their own chickens, they had their beef, they had everything, they had potatoes and strawberries. And I mean, I mean, they um, one thing they didn't have to worry about is, is, is going to Publix. That's right. Huh? That's right. <laughs> My wife goes to Publix. She go to Publix, and uh, I give her a certain card she uses at Publix and I said honey we spent all that money on that card and I looked on there I went to Publix three times I look on there $236 Publix $187 Publix $300 Publix and that's even buy one get one free <laughs> Grocery gone up, haven't they? <laughs> you don't take a twenty dollar bill to the store now and go shopping. I just, I just sent, I just sent to get two items from the corner store. I got, a five, I got, uh, you know, give, I give a twenty dollar bill. Got about a five, a little five and some couple singles up. Seven back from from twenty. Yeah, for uh, for a little bit, a little bit toilet paper and creamer. Everything costs. I bought the cheap stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was the cheap stuff. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Something wrong with the no man that hired us, he says unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard sent unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last to the first. Now, the laborers. So God is for work. I believe he's for work. Uh, according to this particular passage of scripture, uh, what does he kind of say a work day consists of? How many hours? 12 hours. Huh? Well, that was before the 12th. No, they got paid a penny after 11 hours. Huh? They got paid their penny after 11 hours. After 11, that was in the 12th hour. Yeah, we'll get to that in the and because it was in the 12th hour, that's the work day's over. Well, anyway, you know, I'm not going to split hairs over it, but it, it was in, it was, uh, uh, no, if, 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 if it was over, if it was over the 11th hour, it means it was in the 12th hour, because it can't be in the 11th hour anymore, because the 11th hour is over, it's the 12th hour. Well, anyway, quit trying to be argumentative, Donnie. All right, just get the, chapter, just get the verse 9 and we'll see. <laughs> when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto the steward, Call laborers and give them the hire, beginning from the last unto the first. Now, uh, when, was, when was the last one hired? In the 11th hour. Okay. And um, so he was kind of like, uh, remember someone else? 11th hour, uh, last minute person. Let's call him the thief on the cross, huh? Yeah, thief on the cross. He got saved in what? Last minute, didn't he? Yeah, but then the other one did. Now, you see, you see, 
reward, reward for salvation is heaven. So the old boy on the cross, the thief, he repented at the last minute, didn't he? So here this guy, he, this labor could have been a man, could have been a woman. Uh, they just worked for a short period of time. But then the dude, the dude that come in was there all day working, put the whole shift in. How much did he bargain for? Penny. Penny. How much did the last guy bargain for? Penny. How about the one five hours? Penny. Six hours. Yeah, Penny. So none of them had no gripe, did they? No. <laughs> but they're like us, aren't they? We'll <laughs> Once you see someone else getting what you didn't get, yeah. you're going to gripe. Eh? How many of you have been there done that? So, some people come around here, you know. Some people come around here. Some people do. So, you know what? You know what someone else done for me. You don't know what anybody else. And they watch it. They do the something. I give you what I give. I don't hire nobody around here. I give gratuity. That means that uh, uh, that uh, if you help me, I might give you something. Don't depend upon it. But it's uh, uh, it, I'm I'm just I'm, I'm great. I'm gracious uh, for for what you've done. Yeah. So I'm rewarding you. Yes. You, you ain't on my payroll. I just reward you for what you've done. Okay. And some. Uh, sometimes I give someone five. Sometimes I give ten. Twenty maybe. Sometimes fifty. I've given people a hundred dollars. I've given people sitting in this room more than a hundred dollars. Uh, don't worry about what someone else did. If I give you something, be grateful. And shut up. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Got a couple givers in here. My buddy here been giving for a long time. He give me a long time. He probably will. I don't know if he will. Or he might. You don't have to if you don't want. But usually when he comes in here, he gives me money. Not me, the church. He might not, but he generally does because he's a, he's a giver. He's a giver. Well, he'll tell you about tithing. Jake will tell you too. Jake's the same way. He's a giver. Sure, he will. He'd he come up here and preach on tithing. He's come. You know, he uh, before he crashed. You, you know, uh, Jake. Every time I go pick you up. Uh, Jake lives one block uh, past 7-Eleven. He crashed just before the 7-Eleven on his motorcycle. He's supposed to have been dead, but he, but he didn't. But anyway, uh, before he crashed, thank God he's come back and he, he's doing real well. But before that, sometimes sometimes I wouldn't see Trace for a long time. And he pulled up on his motorcycle out there. And uh, I hadn't seen him a long time. Sometime he'd pull out a hundred, two hundred, a lot of money. And he and he'd say, Pastor, here's my tithe. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but he's a giver. Uh, there are very few Christians that are givers. Very few. So you say, well, I'm not a giver. Well, join the majority. You, you, you're with most. Most people don't give. Huh? Trace a giver. Jake's a giver. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying none of you ever give, but I'm talking about people that give above and beyond. And, and, and they give because they're supposed to, because they love God and they're giving it to God. Now, I'm not going to say nothing about my giving, and that, that's irrelevant. I'll tell you something. I'll guarantee you this. Giving it should be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. For with what meat you give, God will give to you. I ain't going to say nothing else, but you try it, it works. That's all I'm going to say about that. Go on, keep being a tight one. 
That's your problem. So when they was come to the Lord of the vineyard, call laborers, give them their hire, beginning at the last first. When they came, they were hired about 11th hour, received every one a penny. When the first came, they supposed that they would receive more. Why should they receive more? They bargained for a penny. They likewise received every man a penny. When they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house. You make a deal, stick with it. Huh? <laughs> they didn't have no problem when they hired on, did they? Verse 12. Saying these last have wrought but one hour. That has made them equal unto us. You see, I want what I deserve. Okay, go to hell. You say, I just want what I deserve. Okay, then go on to hell. Because that's what you deserve, you understand? That's what he's reckoning this unto. You get heaven for a penny or for free. And if you want, you say, I want, I want what I deserve. Go on to hell. Go on to hell. Which have borne the burden in the heat of the day. Verse 13. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. This shall not thy agree for me for a penny. We had a deal. You trusted me. I give you salvation. You're going to heaven. Verse 14. Take that, that, take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto the last even as unto thee. You ain't getting nothing going to hell what you deserve. It is not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own. If thy is thine eye evil, because I am good. The last verse, verse 16, for the reading for today in New Testament. So the last shall be first. There you go. And the first, last. For many are called, but few are chosen. How many of you are called, everybody? Everybody's called. God's not willing any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Many are called, but few are chosen. The chosen ones are the ones that believe in Jesus. They're not elected like the false teaching Calvinists. I know a lot of them. Calvinists. They're fatalists. They say that God just marked a few people down and gave them the privilege of going to heaven, and he, he, he condemned the rest to hell. That's not true at all. It ain't true for a minute. For many are called. Everybody's called, but few are chosen. Did anybody know how you become a chosen one? Anybody got any idea about that? You believe on Lord Jesus Christ, and you're saved. It's completely by faith. Believing that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried and rose again, plus nothing, zip. Not good works, not baptism, not confirmation, not being a Baptist or a Catholic or a Methodist or a Pentecostal. Believe. One prerequisite to be a chosen one. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved, plus nothing, 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 nothing. Well, glory. You're trying to figure out some way to get saved. Why don't you just give up? I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender all. To him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. Would you do it? I have. Have you? If you haven't, will you? Have you or will you? If you don't, you lost. You lost. Yeah. 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 Many are called, everybody. Nobody would excuse. 
You're going to go to hell because you've rejected Christ. No excuse. No excuse. Oh, I'm so glad I'm saved. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Well, glory, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. You say Baptists ain't supposed to sing that song. Go on back to hell. You don't know what a real Baptist is. <laughs> <laughs> Real Christians sing that song. Amen. Yeah. Come on. You can get in on the cross. Bill. Worst employee I had for a telephone company is an installer. If you work for a telephone company, you're almost uh, certain you'd never be fired. They very seldom fired anybody. They're the largest corporation in the world when I worked for them. It was AT&T worldwide. I worked for Wisconsin Bell. I was a supervisor. I had a guy in my crew, Bill Oldenburg. He's a terrible employee. Called me on the job and he smiles. Yeah, Bill. My car won't, my truck won't go. Uh, he's, he, always, he always had some, he always had some self made destruction. Do you understand what I'm saying about it? He was a self destroyer. I went over there, he was parked on a corner in a subdivision and he's parked the side of a house. I went there and I looked, a bunch of dirt underneath his truck. And he says, I tried to pull away from the curb here and the, and the, and the truck wouldn't, wouldn't go. So I don't know what to do, he says. Act is stupid, you know. And so I looked and I got in and uh, and uh, the motors start, but nothing, nothing had happened. A man come knock on the window. I'm lightheaded. Man, this sickness is messing with me. I'll finish preaching. God, you figure out what this is. I won't finish preaching. I won't fall over. Uh, and the man said, Sir, I don't know you, but it looks like you're his boss or something. Yes, I'm his boss. He says, I was going to tell you what happened. I was, I was in my kitchen, and the kitchen window looked out on this street, and, and I heard a, a noise, I heard a, a engine r revving. And it said, I, I caught my attention. I looked, and I seen the engine revving, and all of a sudden I heard, pow! What have you done? Is he, is he, he had it as a stick shift. It's old school, back in the old days. I don't know man. And he, uh, he had full throttle, had it in first, and he popped the clutch. He blew up, uh, he, he blew up the clutch and transmission was all laying on the pavement. He says, that's what he did. So his boss, my, my boss and his boss, second level boss, he says, oh, you know, this guy's been in trouble for a long time. He said, we got, we got to fire him. We got to fire him. Well, that was just, you never heard that much at the phone company. I mean, we had enough on that guy to put him in the electric chair. I mean, not really. He didn't murder nobody. but <laughs> I mean, one thing they did at, at, at the phone company, if you were a boss, you did a lot of record keeping. Every time as a man was late, it went on the record. I mean, they didn't play. And I mean, you documented. I mean, everything was, was documented. And uh, the employees did, that worked for it, they didn't like me as a boss. You know why? 
because their other bosses they drank with and fooled around with and that looked the other way. That wasn't me. Because I, I, I was a Christian. I only had a couple of saved people. And all the time I had crews, only a few times I'd have a saved person. That'd be my, be my deal, you know. I took over a crew. I took... Morning meeting, I come there. I got all the penthouse and Playboy and all the magazines off of their trucks. In the eat at night, they park at night. I took all the took all dirty magazines off their trucks, and uh, had them piled up at the meeting in the morning. We had a meeting in the morning before I set them out on the job. You know how it is when you work, you get a meeting boss. I says, see all these dirty magazines. Uh, I says I don't have to, but I'll give you one chance. You you want to get your dirty magazine? Come on over here and get it right now. None of them come. I said, so I'm throwing them away. You can't throw them away. I says, you watch me. I says, you got Dirty Magazine up here? Come get it right now. You get it. They, they, they didn't know if I was going to send them home or fire them or what because they, they had no business having them in their, in their truck, see? Because that's company property. It was, against, it was against our rules for them to have Dirty Magazines on their, on, in, in their truck. So anyway, so... I wasn't number one on the hit parade. When I took over that crew, I said, you know, a lot of you guys, you go out of here in the morning, you don't go to your first job, you're supposed to leave here by 8.15, you're supposed to be on your first job working by 8.30. Some of you go to a restaurant and have breakfast. I know where you go. If you go there, I'll come and get you and send you home. Oh, do you see the looks I get? One thing they knew, Varga wasn't playing. That's it. You know what? All of a sudden, our, our crew had the best production of any crew, of eight crews. You know why? Because we was working. We weren't sitting around the coffee shop and a lunch shop or said to the beer garden, some go to beer garden even, on company time. I'm talking about Ma Bell. I'm not talking about uh, redneck construction workers. I'm talking about certified Ma Bell employees. Some of them even drinking with their boss. The union steward come up to me when I took over the crew. And walked in, he says, my name's Stetler. I'm the union steward, I said, okay. Nice to meet you. He said, what's that cross doing up there on your wall? I said, I put it up there. He said, what's, what's that on your desk? It's Bible. I didn't have to answer him nothing. Who is he going to come in here? He works for me. Going to ask me why I have a Bible on my table. I answered him. I started reading on my lunch hour. And break. He said, well, I don't like it. He said, I'm a union steward. You're going to have to get rid of the Bible and the cross. I said, okay. I says, listen. I said, the cross comes down. I was a supervisor, first level supervisor. I had a bunch of bosses over me. I says, the cross comes down when the Playboy calendars come down off the other supervisor's wall. I said, Playboy calendars come down, my cross comes down. Got it? But he shut his mouth and walked out. But he's after me. He, and that's a whole other story. I ain't going to get into that because I don't want to get into Stetler's story. I want to be Bill Odenberger's story. So we fired Bill, my boss. My boss was a hard-nosed guy. He's the one that promoted me. He's the one that seen me as a young guy. And I was a boss as a young man. Most everybody I ruled over uh, as a boss, they were, they were all older than me. I was the youngest guy. But I had a boss that was a stickler. And he knew, he wasn't a Christian, but he knew what I was all about. And that it was going to be the letter of the law. Boy, I'm dizzy. If I fall over, you know what happened. I think God let me finish preaching. Uh, 
Lord knows all about this, whatever I got. I don't know. But I'm glad that I got a God in heaven that knows. Amen. Mackin. Boy, when you mention the word Mackin, people shiver. He's my boss, but he liked me. He liked Varga. Because I played his ball game. Back and called me, says, hey, I had a hard time. He said, we got to hire the guy back. Why? He's got terminal cancer. He's going to die within a few months. We're going to hire him back. You're going to be on a payroll. You're going to have to take him his paycheck. We got paid every two weeks. I said, okay, I'll do it. He says, uh, uh, hired him back. Had to go to his house. I see him deteriorate in those months where he became a skeleton. Like Keith to come across the street. Remember yeah. Keith come over here? I didn't know who he was. Yeah. He lived over here across the street and died over there. Yeah. Too late. Too late. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Party's over, folks. The monkey died. <laughs> some of you get that, some of you won't. <laughs> anyway, I'd, I'd, give him, I'd take him his stuff. His money. Made his full paycheck. He lived with a wicked woman. Hated me. Hated the gospel. Hated God. She wouldn't pay no attention. I'd come there. She'd never talk about it. Every time I'd go to him, bring him his check, every two weeks I'd witness to him. What not? This was in the old days. Can you imagine? None of you are hardly old. Money, so, do you, does any of you remember when you could smoke a cigarette in a, in a, uh, uh, in a uh, room in a hospital? I went this Bill Obenberger. He could smoke. I remember when they used to let him on the floor to go outside and smoke. I'm talking about in the hospital. He had a cigarette in his mouth. He says, Boss, would you light my cigarette? He's too weak to light a cigarette. I says, No, I ain't going to light your cigarette. And, uh, I says, you're so weak, Bill, you're going to die any minute. You might not live the rest of the day. He said, I know. I said, I've told you a hundred times, if I told you once, maybe a thousand times, you need to be saved. I expected to get the same no I always got. Bill says, you're right. Tear comes out his face. You're right. I said, you want to get saved, Bill? He says, yeah, I want to get saved. Yeah. Just like Big John, I witnessed to him. Remember Big John? Yeah. Against God? <laughs> Roy Johnson, the ex-mayor. He called me. He said, let's go tell you. Big John hated Roy Johnson and hated me. Roy's a Christian. He said, let's go tell Big John. He, uh, they said he's going to die within a day. Let's go try to get him saved. I said, I'll go with you, Roy. So we went over there. And it shocked me. I can apply this to Big John, too. Bill and Big John. I'm going to tell you the Bill story, though. So he prayed. He got saved. I went back the next day. I was all happy about it. Come in the room. The people all crowded around it. You, somebody might have, Donnie might have heard this story before. He'd been around a long time. He's probably the only one heard it. Anyone else heard this story beside Donnie? I've told it before. Bill Oldenburg's story. Bunch of people standing around him. I come in. Girlfriend's there, you know, the witch. I mean, I mean, when I say witch, I mean, basically, she was really a devil's witch. I believe she's a witch in the witchcraft. He's going to die any minute. He can't move. He can't hear nothing. He can't understand nothing. 
They all, all the, everybody, all his family, his people, wicked girlfriend. I said, well, yesterday, I told a little brief story. His girlfriend knew because she'd been through, she'd been through all this. I'm bringing the money. She'd been his girlfriend a long time before he got sick. He said, I just want to tell you about what happened yesterday. I went through the story about how he got saved. And what he's just laying there like a corpse. When I started telling about how he got saved, he went like this, laying down. He went, he's trying to talk. Tears coming down his face. He was testifying the best he could. Huh? He's like a thief on the cross, wasn't he? He's like a guy got hired in the last hour, amen? Last minute conversion. Listen, thank God. Big John done the same thing over here in Hot Effects Hospital. That ain't been, it's been, in this, it's been more than a year he died, I think. It's been about a year. <laughs> Aren't you glad God has saved us at the last minute? I've been saved over 50 years and I ain't done a thing for it and I can't do a thing for it. And, and you said, well, it's been hard on you, Pastor, because in order for you to be saved, you have been good all this time. No, I haven't been good because ain't none good. Amen. Just like you. Huh? I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Sing in glory. Hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Anybody else here saved? Come on, let's see. Come on now. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Come on, Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. I'm glad he lifted Bill Obenberger. Glad he lifted Big John. You say, How do you know? For I don't know for sure, but what they said last minute. I'm so glad to lift the thief on the cross. Amen? Amen. Well. Famous old song written by a Pentecostal preacher. There's room at the cross for me. There's room at the cross for me. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross. April 4th, 1969. How many of you remember when you got saved? I remember. <coughs> April 4th, 1969. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. As Billy Graham sang thousands of times and thousands came to Christ, yea, maybe millions, Remember his song? What what he always sing? Just as I am without one plea, let thy head thou bled. He sang that for years. He went to England. The English press was like vultures on him. They said he was a showman. They said it was all trickery. They said that he he got him to come forward singing that song. 
That was the reason. Never had he ever done this. He was there for several weeks. He said, I've been under the constant attack of the liberal press in England. We're not going to sing just as I am. Not going to have. It. Just going to ask people to get saved. No altar call, no just as I am. And for weeks, had the same results. Huh? Yeah. You might say Billy Graham's a fake. A lot of Baptist preachers, my friends, say he's a fake. He wasn't no fake. I know many, many people that got saved because of Billy Graham preaching. Many people. A lot of people. Last minute salvation. There's room at the cross for you. Someone, you better hope he ain't taking someone's bike. He stole bikes before here. You better look out there and see if your bike's gone. It's Corey. He just going on. Is his? If you ain't got lock on your bike, I'd watch him because he stole them before. Huh? That was that guy that told to get out of church. That's guy Terrell. Yeah, Corey. I know who he is. I know who he is. I'm well aware of who he is. This ain't my first rodeo. I remember. I got a good memory, too. You might think I'm old and see it. I don't know what's going on. The last shall be first. The first shall be last. Many are called. Everybody's called for your chosen. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I've been saved. Didn't do nothing but believe. Well, you got to do something. No, don't do nothing. Believe on Lord Jesus Christ, no matter how much you've done wrong. I'm a real believer. Heavenly Father, thank you for 16 verses here in Matthew 20. New Testament reading for today. Story of the laborers. Saved that last minute. It's free. April 4th, 1969, I was saved. You're here today. You need to be saved. You know. You're out there interviewing us. You know. I know I'm saved. I don't know if you are. Only you know if you're saved or not. If you're not, pray with me now. This is a sinner's prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave on the third day. Best I know how. With an honest heart, I repent and I turn from my sins. I know I can't save myself. I believe you died, paid. I believe in thee. I'm calling upon you right now. Save me, dear Lord. Save me now. Amen. Amen.